Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Today, we're getting back at it with um, objection handlers this week. So last week, we talked about the pre-qualifying scripts and questions in the pre-listing package. And we wanted to talk about these because naturally, once you go over that, those and you have the listing appointment, the objections are going to start. So we wanted to go over, we have a list of four commonly um, brought up objections, and we're going to discuss those here. So the first one we're going to talk about is I have a friend in the business. Uncle Tim, do you want to go well, over can, this one? Yeah, sure, I can appreciate that, Brooks, you know, and almost everybody does. So let me ask you a question. Do you absolutely have to sell this home, or are you just looking to do your friend a favor? Obviously, you had me out here for a reason, correct? Yes. So, Brooks, do you think I can sell your home? I do. Good. Terrific. Then all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? That sounds good, but uh, I'm nervous to tell my friend that I'm going to list it here with you. Not a problem. Why don't you do this? Why don't you go ahead and sign the contract now? I'll be happy to give your friend a courtesy call and let them know that we've listed the property and that they're welcome to bring over any buyer that they have that's interested in it. And then I'll list it. They can sell it and we'll give them half the commission. Fair enough? Yeah, that sounds great. I'd appreciate that. Perfect. Go ahead and sign the contract. So does anybody else have a objection handler for I have a friend in the business? I know Poppy's got an old one that he used to say to people that uh, you remember what it was, Poppy, about uh, you haven't stopped making, making friends, yeah. have you? You haven't stopped making new friends, have you? Right. You know, and catch them off guard. You know, you go ahead and sign the contract tonight. I could end up being your best friend. Listen, remember, when you're out there, you've got nothing to lose. You've got everything to gain. And the more you come up with things that either will shock them or make sense to them is where you need to be on this, on this appointment. Yeah. So Shelly, let, let's, let's check with you. Um, if you were on a listing appointment and somebody said, you know, I have a friend in the business and you're already there on the appointment, mm -hmm. not to try to catch you off guard, but what would you say? Because that's what's that's what could happen on the appointment. Well, I'd probably tell them to go ahead and list with their friend. No. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you did catch me off guard because um it's been a while since I've had anybody say that to me. But um uh, I usually would probably would ask them how long have they been in the business, you know, how many houses have they sold and how much experience do they have and Usually the friendships, when, you know, that kind of business doesn't work out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's leading with the doubt drops. And that, yeah. that would be the way to go with that, Shelly. And that's good not to try to catch you off guard, but that's what happens when you're on the appointment. Right, yeah. And they catch you off guard. You have to have either a canned response or something that you know about. I see Bob Stevens smiling here. Or smirk and what what would you say, Bob, if somebody said that and they already have you out on an appointment? I would ask them if they reviewed my resume, which I include in my presentation, and did you get one from your friend? Uh, if you take a look at my resume, you'll see that I've been in the business for over 30 years and are very successful. And hopefully you'll consider that. Yep. Good. And that's a great response, Bob. And 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 another point of where you're probably going with that too is that you know sometimes when you're friends they might not have gone through it the way you would have gone through it with them you know as a professional because the friends think they already got it made and they're going to get it anyway and they they might not have done the job that you would do as a professional so you know like Bob's saying look at my resume you know and, and Shelly's um, with your comments, what, what you're doing is uh, with the doubt drops is you're taking it away from the friend and bringing it back to you and what while why they had you out there in the first place. 
and then always remember to close, you know, so as soon as you give your answer, close. So Kong, what would you say if they said they had a friend? Again, are you doing your friend a favor or are you looking to net the most money you can for the biggest investment in your life? Okay, so would you, not knowing that um, what the friend's statistics were, or maybe that they were even going to have them out there, when would you follow that up with, with what your statistics are as far as yeah. what you list homes and sell homes for? Sure. You, you definitely have in the pre-call, when you remember one of the pre-call questions is, are you interviewing any other agents? And sometimes... Uh, they'll they'll let you know who it is and and especially if they're a relative or or a friend um and how they respond to that is how i would respond because sometimes if they sound like they're a little nervous about it then you can say you know you had me out for a reason and probably one of the reasons is you don't want your friend to know your financial status there you are it's confidentiality you've got to have you've right. got to bring that point out about confidentiality yeah yeah usually it's it's a sticky point with uh family members and, and friends and stuff about finances so um you play on that and just ask for the contract okay good mm -hmm. so brooks the next one we were going to do is we want to <laughs> think it over right so if you're on an appointment and you're, you've, you've closed and you've gone over the price and you've asked for the listing and they say to you, we want to think it over, what would you say? You know, Mike Ferry's canned answer is that's great. And since three minds are better than two, let's think out loud together. So tell me, what are you thinking about? And try to get them to open up a little bit more. Now, <laughs> I know, Dad, you're going to smile when I say this. We were on an appointment with a minister in Hershey and his wife. And they literally said to us, we want to think it over. We want to sleep on it. And right away, my dad went into an objection handler. And if you remember, could you kind of take him through what the process was with the minister in Hershey? Because at the time, it was beautiful. <laughs> Well, I said to the minister, I said, look, what you're doing at this point is just like what we're doing is just like you do in church. You, at the end of your sermon, you ask everyone to come down the aisle. You invite them through faith to come down the aisle and, and, and give themselves up to their Lord and Savior. At this point, we're doing the same thing by asking you to make a decision. You know that we're the best agency for you. We've gone over that in the qualifying questions. What's holding you back? Let's have an opportunity, make that decision. Come down the aisle with Tim and I. And it worked. It worked and they signed the contract. It was beautiful because what's holding you back when, when when he related it to the minister of him calling the parishioners down the aisle, and when he related that to them, that that hit them, didn't it? Then? And he, my dad crazy. said, "What's holding you back?" And and they really didn't have an answer to what's holding your back, and they went ahead and signed the contract. So, like I said, it it was a beautiful moment that worked with the way Poppy handled that objection. So, Kara, if somebody said to you, we want to think it over, what, what would your response be if you were on a listing appointment? I would ask them, is it, what's the reason or what could I do that we could join forces right now and get this property sold? Okay. Is there any reason? Good. Yeah. Kong, how about you? What would you do? Um. Well, since you already have me out today, I'll tell you what we'll do. Why don't you sign the contract now, think it over, and if you change your mind tomorrow, I'll rip up the contract. Otherwise, you had me out today. Let's sign the contract. Let me get started right away on this, 
to get your home sold. Okay, good. Brooksy, what would you say? Yeah, um, I typically use the Mike Ferry, you know, two or three heads are better than than one. So tell me what exactly is holding you back right now from moving forward and us getting started and getting you moved onto your next home. And when you're doing that, please, it's an NLP word. What specifically is holding you back today? Um give you a perfect example of that. And this is going way back when, but I went to Middletown one time to a lady by the name of Ruth Zimmerman. And I asked that question because everything else went perfectly within in the interview. And we went through the two heads are better than one. Tell me specifically what's holding you back. And she said, well, I need a couple of weeks. See, when you say specifically, I need a couple of weeks to get all my daughter's stuff down in the basement out of the house. So I said, that's perfect. What we'll do is predate the contract two weeks from now. Will that give you enough time to do that? And she said, yes. And they signed the contract that day only because I got to the root of the real problem. And that's your job to get to the root of the real problem, no matter what you do. Good, good. One more. Let's go to Keith. Keith, what would the ninja training have you do if somebody said to you, we want to think it over? Um, well, I would I would say it, it sounds like we have some questions that maybe haven't been answered. So, you know, my job here today is to help you get clarity. So what are the things that are holding you back from making a decision? Um, wait for their answers, write them down. If I could answer all of those questions for you, would you be uh, would you be open to signing the contract today? Yeah, if we knew all that information, then we feel like we could sign the contract. Well, let me go over this, and then at the end of it, if you don't have any questions, then we can sign the contract and get started. Sound good? good? Yep, Keith. I'm glad you brought that up because what you first said there was that they might have questions that were unanswered, right? And mm -hmm. I've seen Mike Ferry's. Um, people do an objection handler very, very similar to exactly what you just said, but they added one little thing to it, which was, you know, how you said it, obviously, you obviously still have some questions that might be unanswered because normally people just go right ahead and, and sign with me at this point, you know, so obviously I haven't answered all of your questions. So if you can do that, that that's a great objection handler. Good job on, on uh, their bringing up the fact that the reason that they might want to think it over is there's still some unanswered questions. Yep. Perfect. Good yeah, job. Keith. Thanks. So, um, Brooksy, the next one we were going to do was, uh, you haven't it, sold any homes in my area. Yeah. You haven't sold any homes in my area. Perfect. You know, Brooks, that's a valid concern. And the obvious reason that you'll choose me now is that my company has homes for sale all over the community, meaning, when you sign the contract tonight with me, we can expose your property to potential buyers from all over the area. Do you realize how important that kind of exposure is? Yes. Uh, yeah. Good. Sounds sounds great. Now, isn't that what you want, Brooks? That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, of course it is to expose it to everybody. Therefore, all we need to do now, Brooks, is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? That's awesome. Perfect. Sign the contract. So, Kong, I know you've handled one of these before. It was either in Lebanon or or um, one of those areas where somebody said to you, was it you and Jim Penny or you and... Yates. This, oh, this John, was back in 2011. Yeah, people, you, that, they, that you haven't sold in, any homes in my area. And what did you right. say? Um, actually... That was where we bought our 30 day marketing plan with all the neighborhoods around that area. So it looked like we knew the, the neighborhood um, and, and who would be the potential buyers for it. But we also said, if we bought you a buyer from Mechanicsburg, would you have a problem with that? Right. Would you not sell the home to a buyer right. from Mechanicsburg? 
So, and coincidentally, a Remax agent from our area sold that house. So mm -hmm. it, it worked out. So, yeah. Yep. So you guys got the listing by doubt dropping them on the fact that, so if the buyer came from out of the area, like Mechanicsburg, right. you wouldn't want to sell the home to them? I mean, yeah. obviously the, the agencies in, in Lebanon are already going to be trying to show and sell your house. So wouldn't it be great to expose it to more than just the local agencies? It would be good to expose it to other agencies outside of the area so they can all bring their buyers to your home in Lebanon? And yeah, the benefit of that one, right? the benefit of that one too, Tim, it was an expired listing. So we also said, folks, you had somebody local list the house the last time and it didn't work. Right. There you go. <laughs> Good. Right, so yeah. it depends on the situation again. Yep. Yep. Does anybody else have that type of objection that they've gotten before that? Uh, Jim, go ahead. Why don't you tell us what happened? Well, I was just going to say, I've talked to a couple people on the phone where I've used that approach. In fact, I have a listing in Waynesboro right now where I use that, just saying that, you know, sometimes we can bring you buyers from outside of the area. And I just tell them that, you know, I've I'll go wherever I need to to get business. I've been to Chambersburg, Lancaster, Lebanon, wherever, you know, and they seem to like that. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else want to volunteer? I know, Kathy, you've been working out of the area for a few times. You've gone to Media, Pennsylvania, which is what, on the outskirts of Philadelphia? That's right. Yes, for a former student of mine. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we made three trips down there total, sold them the first house, and then they reached out a couple months ago, and we're going to move, and this time to Allentown. It took me one trip to Allentown. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't have a problem driving. Yep. Okay, good. So, Brooksy, let's go on to the next one. So what do you do specifically to get homes sold? You know, Brooks, that's a valid concern. And let me ask you, are you aware that there are two types of real estate agents? I didn't realize that. You didn't realize that. Okay, good. There's passive and active agents. I'm an active agent, meaning that when you sign the contract tonight, I'm going to actively and aggressively market your home to all the other active agents in town. Isn't that what you want? I would think so, yeah. Yeah, of course it is. You want somebody that's going to work hard to get your home sold, right? Yes, yeah. Perfect. All we need to do now, Brooks, is simply sign the contract and put me to work. So go ahead and sign the contract. Sounds good. Okay. So let's just jump back to Kong again. What are you going to do to sell homes? Why don't you tell them, Kong, about what we used to do on some of those listing appointments with the 30-day marketing plan? Yeah, we'll have a 30-day marketing plan drawn up day one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 30. <clears throat> and we include in there about how we'll uh, put the house on the market, put a sign on the uh, in the yard. Um, neighborhoods that we will be prospecting. And then we talk about cross um, prospecting. And that's where we'll look at neighborhoods of potential buyers or where potential buyers are living now, call those neighborhoods and try to get their listing as well. So that's how we continue to, to build our business. Um, but in the business plan, we also have in there when we'll do open houses, um, communications with them once a week. And then also we put on the very last day a price reduction. Good. I was so hoping you were going to bring, bring that up. So, yeah. So we're already pre-marketing to them as part of the 30-day process that if we do this, 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 and this, and we don't get a contract in that 30 days, it's time that we look to uh, lower the price to a price that's going to cause it to sell. Correct. Correct. And yeah, I guess this question, I, I don't get asked this question anymore because I bring that on a listing appointment so they know what we're going to do. Okay. You know? So you, yeah. you might want to 
if, if you're getting asked this question, you may want to change your pre-listing marketing package so that people know what you're going to do. Is there anybody else that wants to volunteer what they would say to a client on what they would do to get a home sold? <laughs> Dave White, what are you going to do to get a home sold? For putting me on the spot. So um, part of what my pre-listing package includes is the uh, plan of action. I would go through the plan of action to okay. uh, show them exactly what I will do. And it's very similar to what Kong's talking about, only it's not broken out as a 30-day plan. Okay. So maybe one of the things we can do, Brooks, as a follow-up with this is we have the Mike Ferry plan of action and we can send it out to everybody and then they can customize it to whatever's going to work best for them, you know, as part of their style with it. But thank you, Dave. That's actually why I called on you is because I thought you might use that plan of action, which I have right here in this book. So good, good. Thank you for doing that. Kara, what would you say to somebody if they ask you, what do you do to get home sold? What would you, what would you say? Well, I would go over that plan as well that just like everyone else was discussing. Um, but I would also bring out a track record. Okay. Yeah, I bring out a track record and I'd also share with them some of my testimonials from other clients that were listing clients. Okay, good. Good. Those are some great ideas. So now that we're on the listing presentation and assuming that we closed and got the listing, and that these people are going to then buy a home from you when you are, get their home sold. Is there anybody at that meeting, that listing presentation meeting, that takes along a buyer agency contract with them and gets them to sign it now? Anybody? I see some heads going up and down, Kara. And it's important that you do that because remember this. When you get them to sign the contract and they've committed to selling their house, all of a sudden they're getting real excited to start looking for homes. Mm -hmm. And when they start looking for homes and they start going to open houses and doing things like that, if you don't have them under contract, you could lose if they don't understand the next process. That's it. Yep. So then go ahead, Kara. The next process is to get this thing signed and explain the buying end of the process. I, you know what, Tim, you nailed it on, on the head. And I think a lot of times buyers will sign something and they'll sign a buyer's agency. We had it happen just the other week, but they don't understand that. So then they're calling another agent, you know, or calling somebody on the sign. So I think as, as agents and in the role of a buyer's agent, if we are talking with a client or a customer tr getting them to be a client, we need to drive that home and say, you know, here's what this means, Mr. Buyer. I'm, you got me and I got you, you know, and we're working together. So if you get down the street and you see agent ABC sign in the yard or you see it on Zillow or whatever, don't hit that little button. You know, you call me or you text me because I'm the one that's going to help you. That's what this means. So I think it's so important to make sure that they understand because they'll sign it. They'll sign it, right? But if they don't understand and they go with somebody else, what are you going to do? And the reason I'm bringing this up is there's a lot of people that get that consumer notice and buyer agency signed by DocuSign and the people don't understand the process. But if you take that along on the listing appointment and it's already filled out, and like Kara says, you explain to them that as they're getting excited not to push that button to call you, you know, they sometimes they have the mindset that they don't want to bother you. No, bother me. Bother me. Mm -hmm. Let me know that you're interested in that property and I'll show it to you, you know. Or if you go to that open house, here's a stack of my cards. Give a card to the agent who's attending that open house and let them know that you're working with me. If they understand the process and they understand that they've signed an agency and they belong to you and you hand them a card and they hand that card out, there's no problems. There's no problems. So it, we have to educate those buyers on that. And I wanted to make sure that we do that. Um, 
you know, so good. So back to the listing presentation um, part of it, I just wanted to make sure we go to the next step. What do you do to home, sell homes? Is, uh, is Donna Denny still on the phone here? Donna? I think she's yeah, I don't see her on here anymore. Okay, she's not on. Okay, does anybody else want to volunteer on that last objection? What do we, Shelley? Go ahead. Yeah, I belong. I have uh, Social Pro through Bright, where okay. whenever I have a listing, they automatically put it on the Facebook business page, um, do YouTube, LinkedIn, and all that. Does anybody else? Because mine is running out here in April. Um, I think it's been good for me because it's a type of advertising when I tell people that they're on, you know, all of those and that YouTube does a, a video of their house and all that. But does anyone else use Social Pro? If there's not anybody else that uses it, it sounds like a good thing. And it sounds like something that you would want to put into your 30 day marketing plan so that it shows the people that when you enter the listing, it's going here, here, here and here all right. those different sites you know mm -hmm. um brooks do you want to explain a little bit again as we're talking about what do you do to get homes sold how adworks works with regards to remax whether people like it or don't like it if you add that seller's name or email address to the adworks program and pay for adworks now then that follows them that every time they get on the mm -hmm. internet to look for a house they're going to actually see their own listing because it, it follows their email address. And then they think that you're a superstar or a rock star because it's on their screen as an advertisement. So could you explain a little bit about how AdWorks work? Yeah, so unfortunately, that relationship between, well, partnership between we AdWorks and yeah. Remax, yeah, it's still, you still can have the same services that they provide, but you have to pay for it. Um, before every listing that we had got a free seven day um, listing period on AdWorks. And the way AdWorks works is you, like my uncle said, you take your seller's contact information, their email address, and you plug it into the AdWorks site. And at that point, they've got a internet um, footprint that they can start target marketing to. Um, not only are they doing that to the seller's behalf, but um, they're also doing it to anybody web browsing within a certain radius of where the property is located. So all the banner ads and ads you see on the side of Facebook, you know, ESPN, Wall Street Journal, that sort of jazz, it's geographic targeting um, campaigns, as well as they're, they're taking the web browsing history. If they've been to Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia in the last 30 days, you know, those are the people that they're trying to hit on those campaigns. And that's what um, AdWork, AdWorks does on your behalf. So it's a cool little pitch if you understand it and know about it, and you want to add that into your your marketing efforts, it's something that's probably going to set you a little bit apart from the average agent because most people don't know too much about it. Good. Thank you, Brooks. Is there anybody else who wants to add anything to what do you do to sell homes before we go into the next topic? Nope. Okay. So my next topic is the emails that I've sent out in the last two days. Brent, if you can unmute yourself. I know you actually liked the last two emails that I sent out. Unfortunately, yesterday's was from the Pittsburgh Steelers coach. Had a hard time doing that one, but that meant a lot to you, Brent. So why don't you tell them what that meant to you with regards to what you're capable of and what you're willing to do? It, it actually relates to more than just business um to me as well i mean absolutely in business but it, it has related to so many things in life as well um and and i just go back to my transition from um my lifestyle and eating and and healthiness um it, it, it's one of those decisions that we make um and a lot of times we just get in our own way with many things whether it's business <laughs> whether it's with a listing, whether it's with what we choose to eat, whether it's with what, if we exercise, 
we're all capable of that, but are we willing to do it? Are we willing, let's talk about business. Are we willing to go and put ourselves in front of these customers and and have these conversations? Um, we're all capable. We're, we're all on this meeting, so we're all capable of it, but are we willing to do it? Um, and then you can relate that to, to personal things in your life as well. It just hit home. It just hit a home run to me yesterday. Um, and, and all the emails Tim has been putting out, it, it you can relate it to business, to personal, to whatever we want. It, it's just the mindset. Um, and I appreciate those, those emails and those two minute or 10 minute um, things. Andrew and I sit down every morning and we watch them. We just watched the one this morning. Uh, with Lou Holtz. It's just been fantastic. It's literally 10 minutes out of our 24-hour day. So thank you very much. Yep. And today's with Lou Holtz is is three really good points that he had. The first one was do what's right. The second one is do everything to the best of your ability. And the third one was show people that you care. Show people that you care. So like Brent said, if you haven't already listened to it, you know, take 10 minutes out of your life and listen to these little motivational videos that uh, that we're doing. We went from songs to videos here for a while just to try to help get you in the correct mindset to do the right thing and do what you need to do in order to be successful. <laughs> and if you're if you keep it simple, and don't make it complicated like Lou Holtz says. It's as simple as this. You got to make the contacts because contact equals contracts. You got to handwrite the notes to the people. By handwriting the notes, you're going to show them that you care, like he said. And do the Popeyes. And like Shelly said, do the, do the, the social media marketing. If you don't know how to do the social media marketing, engage the company that she talk, told you about today. What was the name of it, Shelly? It's uh, Social Pro. Social it's Pro. Through, yeah, it's through Bright. Okay. It's through the MLS. So do what you need to do in order to be successful. So, you know, just going back again to, to Mike Tomlin, we know, like Brent said, we're all capable of this. But are we willing to do what we need to do to be successful today? And we know what that is. And you got to make contacts. Dad, any final thoughts? Well, yeah, I have uh, many of them today. Today is a very interesting thing. Thank you for the 20 or 22 people that are on this call that are sharing the method by which we conduct our professional operation. Um, it's important that we practice just like all the pros practice in every sport and everything that we do every day to become and put on the best performance. Let me qualify that the best sincere performance that anybody can give. You can only get that by practicing like we practice today on this call. It's a shame that more people don't get involved. It's a sharing of ideas for you to become the best that you can be. Just envision this and everybody that's here today. The industry that we're in is a big poker game. The prize, let's just say, is a $2,000 house with a 6% commission or $12,000. What you've done today is demonstrate that you have the ability to remember the cards, the cards being the objection handlers, and you have a better chance of winning that $12,000 prize than all the people that aren't on this call. All the people that are not willing to make the extra step the difference between capable and doing it is a hundred percent commitment. You have to have that commitment if you want to be good at this business. 
I implore every one of you, we're, we're going to give our heart and soul to make this company the very best in all of Pennsylvania. And I implore you to get somebody else on this call so that we practice together and we kick butt this year. Thank you. Thanks, Poppy. And Brooksy, any final thoughts on what, what we got coming next and some of the topics that we've gone over? Because you've come up with some great topics to do not only these calls, but the future First Advantage uh, training system. Yep. So um, Aaron and I have a onboarding call tomorrow with KV Core. So we are hoping after that call, we're going to get the green light to invite our agents. So I don't know if it's going to be next week, but the following weeks, we're going to try to focus on a bunch of KV Core topics. That way we can kind of roll everybody out um, on this program and get everybody educated as to the different features and campaigns that they have to offer. And um, we're going to focus on that for the next month or so. Okay, good. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, participating. I know this one thing is, of course, last week and the, the following weeks, there are a lot of people that do open up this uh, call and view it. Um, last week we had, what, how many people? Was, I know it was over 15 within the first couple of days. So if if um, if you want to hear it again and, and watch it over and over again, you're welcome to click on the link that Brooks sends out to you within the next day or so and uh, listen to it again. So there thank you. you again. Thank you, Brooks, for sending it out. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. Have a great week. Yep. yep. We'll see you next week. week.